It's simple and sweet. With a catchy little melody and a celestial lyric, it is a timeless children's classic. But it also poses a rather serious and intriguing question. How we do wonder what that little star really is, or where it is. But perhaps an even better question might be, what secrets can you share, little star? As scientists have discovered, the answers are diverse and nothing short of astounding. Even before the dawn of history, when humans had just begun to record their journey through the ages, we have instinctively looked to the sky in wonder about our world. With life on Earth in constant change, could the heavens provide clues about what those changes mean and ultimately how to survive and better yet thrive on this planet? Well, actually, astronomy in antiquity was very practical. It would, dealt with the seasons, it dealt with agriculture. It was all about using the motion of the stars as timekeepers, in a sense. And that pretty much persisted until only within the last some 500 years where things have advanced beyond that. As history reveals, early man relied greatly upon the night skies for guidance. At first, the stars were used for basic orientation and to gauge the passage of time. In the years that followed, ancient civilizations embarked upon the creation of immense astronomical artifacts. These monuments were extravagant and not only stood to honor the nations that created them, but were complex in their design. And they ultimately enhanced the intelligence the skies were providing the citizens of the day. Fast forward to modern times, and these markers show prominently the signature of the years. But perhaps more importantly, they are a reminder. What started with men mixing art and science to meet a basic need has evolved into an endeavor that is providing vital insight to our past and a fascinating look into our future. In the beginning, Man gazed skyward with nothing more than the naked eye, and later discovered new frontiers with the earliest telescopes. And really the observational capabilities in astronomy with telescopes was way ahead of the actual physics uh, of, of what, the, what was going on and understanding what was going on. We were observing all these changes in stars, but people really had no idea why. And a lot of the basic physics discoveries in the late 1800s and early 1900s paved the way for the physics and the actual fundamental understanding of stars, stellar processes, uh, fusion, that all had to catch up to what we were actually seeing and trying to understand. And now, with the technology of the world's most powerful exploration tools, the cosmos continue to be a constant source of wonder for astronomers and the common man alike. Once we get into 1970s, that was a big change because in the 1970s, until then, everything was visual observing. Since the mid-1970s, the whole electromagnetic spectrum is open from x-rays to radio waves and everything in between. So we understand the universe across the EM spectrum and it gives us much more information. It, it, everybody's interested is their life anywhere else and we're making that progression step by step to where I'd say within 20 years we may have uh, an affirmative answer to that. From questions of chemistry to history, we continue to look to the stars to enrich what we already know and for clues of what our future might hold. We study asteroids and meteorites to allow us to better understand the origin and evolution of our solar system. The study of near-Earth asteroids, like the ones that contributed to the extinction of the dinosaurs some 65 million years ago, could lead us to identify and prevent future hazards to our planet. And they hold the key to the discovery of potential sources of raw materials essential for future large-scale space activities. 
NASA has more than 100 missions in design, development, or operation to visit the planets and asteroids and comets of the solar system. Very few people know that. And from the sun all the way out to Pluto and beyond, there are probes that are looking at things and studying everything. And that is really the way, the big way to study the solar system now, because we're at a stage right now where we actually have to go there. Astronomy is certainly still helpful. You can do a lot of ground-based remote sensing work, but if you want an advanced understanding, you really have to start going there. Along with national support work in asteroid research at the NASA Infrared Telescope Facility, plans are in the works for UND to join a university consortium that will operate the large solar observatories atop Sacramento Peak in New Mexico. These efforts give UND a competitive advantage and provide direct access to world-class astronomical facilities. As scientists continue to glean knowledge from the night sky, there are new answers coming to light. Right here on the Northern Great Plains, the Space Studies Department at the John D. Odegaard School of Aerospace Sciences is located at the University of North Dakota and is a rising star in the field of astronomy research and education. UND is home to the only active astronomical observatory in the state. In fact, it is home to the only facility of its kind in a region spanning from Minnesota to central Wyoming. But we thought that this would be one research area that we could develop that would help expand UND's research capabilities, bring in more grant money for research for students as well as faculty, and actually make something that is a statewide resource and not something that is just solely for UND. So we have a rather expansive view of this as not just some telescopes that are used by a few students, but something that can be used by students around the state, both at the college level and at the high school, maybe even the junior high school level. Wide open spaces and an environment fundamentally free of light pollution allow for a multitude of quality observing opportunities. And multiple internet controllable telescopes offer high tech access to the stars. A huge boost for research at UND and for education programs at North Dakota's K-12 schools. As a bonus, the facility is able to conduct complementary research to enhance high level projects at larger national observatories. What we've developed since 2005 to what we have now are three internet controllable optical telescopes, uh, two 16 inch aperture and one 10 inch aperture that can be controlled essentially from anywhere with a decent internet connection. You can do this at home, have a cup of coffee, have the TV on and you can move the telescope, you can take images and it's basically all under your control. And that's really the point here, is to bring astronomy to the people. From actually Grand Forks Central High School, uh, we're starting a project with them where the advanced physics students will do a small observing project at the end of every spring. We're working with Fargo Public Schools, uh, the Dickinson area, uh, teachers are interested in using this, as well as UND Space Studies students doing thesis and non-thesis projects. The outlook for the future of the UND Observatory is a bright one. An ambitious campaign is underway to make significant upgrades to equipment and the facility site. The improvements are certain to enhance educational and research opportunities, but the ultimate goal is to make the facility more functional and accessible for all. Dr. Paul Harderson is leading the charge to expand and improve the observatory. You know, North Dakota is sort of a, a paradox right now because we are one of the few states with a big budget surplus but there's no extra money around. So that's why this year we're having a much wider effort to raise money. And for example, we have a monthly fundraiser at a local restaurant, Space Aliens. And the first one was one of the best ones ever, and that's gonna occur monthly. So we have support from UND. Uh, we are going to do more public events uh, throughout the year. And I have a grant, a pending grant at the National Science Foundation, and this will use the observatory to train 15 undergraduates around the state in astronomy in my Space Studies 425 course, pretty much an accelerated version of that over the summer. Then they'll do a remote observing project the following year, then they'll come back during the summer and we'll have a mini science conference. So what wonders will the stars reveal next? 
That's anyone's guess, but Dr. Harderson says what is clear is that progress at UND's Internet Observatory and Space Studies program has opened the door to new exploration at the university and even greater opportunities for future astronomers. And that's one of the things that we're trying to get through is that, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. We do have an observatory and uh, it is growing and it is vibrant and uh, there's a lot that can be done. Uh, student interest in the observatory itself has started to increase, which has been really nice, both in campus and distance students. And that's nice to give distance students in our program an opportunity to do a research project where they don't actually have to be here. If history holds true, children of all ages and all nations will continue to sing that song about wonder about that little star, a mere speck amongst the galaxies that has sparked the marvel and captured the attention of so many throughout the ages. And as long as there are stars in the sky, their seemingly endless store of knowledge will continue to provide vital answers about life on Earth in years before our history and in years to come. To learn more about new opportunities in astronomy or for information about how you can help secure the future of the Internet Observatory at UND, follow the contact information on your screen now.